Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Farmer Intelligence. We're the publishers of Pink Sheet, Script, Invivo and Generics Bulletin. We're here at Bio Europe Spring in, in Amsterdam uh, where various stakeholders in the life sciences world, whether they're big pharma, biotechs or investors, all get together to sort of dis discuss the various themes or the challenges that the industry faces, but it's also an opportunity for them to discuss progress in their own programs and also start the sort of the seeds for uh, your potential deal making and uh, you know, mergers and acquisitions, etc. You know, now and then, biotech companies actually have a product which it's clear because of the size of the market they're not going to be able to do themselves, so therefore they do need to secure the support of Big Pharma. So I, I'm joined by Gunnar Gordmeier, who's the uh, chief business officer of Swedish company Follicum. You guys are in an interesting area which is not life-threatening but still uh, potentially life-changing in terms of hair loss so you know, how did you get into hair loss in the first place well it's very interesting I mean as usually serendipity plays a role here so about 10 years ago uh, one of our founders were looking into cardiovascular effect of a protein called osteopontin right. found very little effect of the protein as such but uh, the animals injected uh, with the osteopontin uh, they grew a lot of hair actually and that's how the, the sort of the company was founded right so so it was almost like an adverse reaction yes. you ended up with very hairy mice exactly. so were you able to identify what made the mice hairy yeah, actually we, we have identified which sequence of the, the protein the osteopontin and then we sequenced out the peptide that okay. we now call FOL005 and that's actually what we put through both in vivo in vitro tests right. toxicity and are done, of course, then appropriate the CMC work, and now we also finished the first phase one, two A study. So what you doing? So this, you're doing the safety studies now, yeah. and you know what is the timeline for, for, for that work? Uh, well, the, the the first safety study that was actually concluded uh, last year, and that concluded right. that uh, FOL 5 was as safe as placebo. Right. We also saw that we had uh, about three out of four that responded with hair growth. So we started now a new study, a phase 2A study, last week, uh, first patient in. And this study focuses then on efficacy. So it's 60 volunteers or 60 alopecia patients for three months. And then we are measuring this through uh, digital photography and the software uh, program actually. So it's, it's people who are suffering from alopecia that, yes. that you're, yes, you're, you're, you're yeah. treating? Yeah. Okay, so uh, there are already you know, products for hair loss. I mean, yes. you see the, see the adverts in the yep. back of newspapers, yes, etc. Yep. So, you know, what is it that you, your approach yep. that will differentiate yourselves from yep. the, other, the other things out there? What we are talking well, first of all, I mean, this market is a market of about three billion US dollars today. It's dominated by two uh, products today. That's uh, minoxidil and finasteride. Uh, both are, uh, have limited effects. Uh, they have, uh, I would say, uh, quite severe side effects and a low number of responders. So uh, in our profile of, the, the, of FOL005, we are targeting something that hopefully can get uh, better efficacy than minoxidil, that will be safer than both minoxidil and finasteride, right. and also they have to have a sort of a, a very attractive topical formulation uh, for uh, then uh, uh, application on the scalp. So the, 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 the phase 2A trial you're doing at the moment, that's a topical? No, that, that's actually an injection. And the reason for that is that we have got to go stepwise. Right. Because uh, last year was the first time that we put uh, the peptide into man. Uh, this year we are looking into then efficacy. And if we then add a topical on, on top of a new peptide, uh, and we had an, uh, an inconclusive result of the, uh, the clinical study, right. then we wouldn't know if it was the topical formulation or the peptide, actually, that oh, it was right. the, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's almost a kind of um, a, a sort of a placebo. Yeah, you can say that, yeah, sure. Yeah, in terms of like you're actually sort of demonstrating that the active exactly. actually is doing what it should yeah. do. Yeah. So the, the way that the, 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 the product would work, I mean, is it, is it one injection and then that stimulates no. the follicles or is it something that is continuous? Well, so, so, as, as it looks today, I mean, we have tr tr tried both twice weekly and three times weekly and it looks like three times weekly is the optimal today. 
Then again, we have to compare with, for instance, minoxidil. And minoxidil is given uh, twice daily. So we think also we have an advantage, I mean, versus uh, minoxidil in that sense that you only have to apply it three times weekly right. to get the hair growth that you're after. Right. Okay. And so, so I mean, it's it's not a life-threatening condition. No. Um, so, w w what would sort of pricing and reimbursement look like? I mean, well, uh, is it going to be an over-the-counter? Yeah, the, the, I, I think that as this is a new peptide, you probably for the first couple of years it will be a prescription only yeah. in most markets. Maybe with the exception of uh, Japan, where minoxidil was uh, OTC uh, already from start. But in the rest of the world, it will probably be a prescription, uh, followed by maybe OTC see it then within two years' time or something like that. Okay. Um, so, so what what is the the sort of timeline projection for the development of both the injectable and then the um, the, the topical? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we feel the study that we just started last week that yeah. will read out in quarter three this year. Okay. That means that we can start the next uh, phase two study with topical formulation on scalp already in January 2019, with a read out in quarter three 2019. Yeah. And at that point you then sort of look to do the, the phase three? Well, uh, that, at that time I mean, we have already planned then the phase three, so that you could start then uh, early 2020. Right, okay. And, I mean, it's a big market. I mean, yes. you mentioned already uh, billions of dollars. So, yeah, a company like Follicum, I mean, yeah. Yeah, who, who's back to you to date? Well, to today, I mean, we are a, a, a public company in Sweden. So we, we are on the, one of the public lists. We have a, the main owner is Swedish Growth Fund with about 12%. Right. But the, the rest of was, uh, uh, I would say, ordinary people that, that invest in, in, in shares. So you got a lot of retail investors. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, you, do you have the financial wherewithal to take these products all the way to the marketplace uh, yourself? Well, we, we have the financial leeway to, to take it through this year. And then we, we are looking at, of course, refinancing the company as we speak. Right, okay, that would be what, through a pipe or through a follow-on offer? Uh, we haven't really decided yet. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, but you are looking for partners? Absolutely. To, at what point would you bring on a partner? Uh, well, I think that uh, from a value creation point of view and looking at it from our company's perspective, uh, the, the, the first um, uh, value creation point, that would be of course the, the present study readout. So then we are talking about September this year. What of course is the, the ultimate proof uh, of principle here, or uh, proof of concept. That's of course the scalp uh, and topical, and that will be then at the end of 2019. But we already have a couple of companies that are very interested in looking into this uh, sort of in, in more detail. Right, right. And and the molecule, I mean, it's, it's, it's for, I mean, it was developed for a, a, a different area, and you sort of say in the cardiovascular space, and it didn't, yeah. didn't work, but it does have uh, you know, this impact on, on, on hair yes. growth. Are there other indications beyond sort of alope treatment of alopecia yeah. that you'll be looking to? Yes, I think that, uh, for instance, hair inhibition, which is an equally large area as hair growth, is uh, of course one of the first areas where we have actually some uh, preclinical data already. So we, we, yes, that we, we lack a little bit of resources today, I mean, to, to really pursue this. Other areas is, of course, in general, uh, areas within tissue, skin and hair. And we can uh, think of areas, like, for instance, like, um, just to take a few examples, wound healing, maybe psoriasis, maybe other areas in, in that. Uh, okay. So, so Follicum, are you, are, you, are you a one product company at the moment, uh, or well, do you have a pipeline? We have a small pipeline, uh, in the sense that we are looking into not only hair growth, but also hair inhibition, yeah. and then of course the topical formulation to go with that. And the, the, the newest is that we, uh, last year we filed a patent in diabetes because uh, through again a serendipity finding we found that most of the substance uh, that we have uh, with our peptides actually is uh, going to the pancreas and it goes then uh, directly to the, the Langhans uh, eyelets. Okay, right, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's, that's something else that, that you, you, you... Exactly, but that's very early stage today. Okay, okay. So, yeah, this is a partnering meeting, so... Yes. How much, um, how attractive is, is the sort of the hair loss story? I think it's quite attractive, surprisingly act attractive. And I think that uh, this is, of course, the, the, there are a couple of reasons for this. First of all, if you look at the pipeline of products, it's, it's very, very uh, thin. 
So we have maybe six to eight uh, projects that has been in phase uh, or is in phase one, two. Many of those have actually been in phase uh, one maybe for five years, which also means, of course, that they, they might not come to the market. So in, in essence, you have maybe two, three products that are actual product candidates for, for hair growth. So that's one reason. The other reason is, of course, the big uh, and growing market uh, of about three billion uh, US dollars. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, sort of big pharmaceutical companies, I mean, are they sort of, are there many people that you could actually you know, partner this pro project with? Uh, there are, uh, I, well, I, I can take the example. This week I have about uh, 20 meetings with pharmaceutical companies that have some interest in dermatology or hair regulation. Okay, okay, good, good. Well, okay, that's good. Thanks very much for, for stopping by. Thank Cheers. you.